Good day, good day everyone and once again we're back together. Well, there's a little bit of an echo and I hope that uh, it doesn't disturb the flow of our lessons. Right, so we're looking at Avogadro's law and still under guest laws uh, this uh, day. Right, so if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure you're part of the family. And of course, you can always follow us on socials, right? At underscore Mlungi Singosi. Right, so let's get right into our lesson. Now, Avogadro's law uh, simply states that, right, equal volumes of gases at the same temperature and pressure contain equal number of moles. So what does that mean? Equal volumes of any gas, uh, I mean, of, of any gases, right, at the same temperature and pressure contain equal number of moles. Now, what that simply means, ladies and gents, is that the volume of any gas, right, is directly proportional to the number of moles. Of course, we are assuming still that we are dealing with ideal gases, right? So meaning that the more the number of moles increase, right, the greater volume that that gas will occupy. All right, we'll talk a little bit later about Avogadro's number, uh, but, you know, it stems from this very theory. So what this simply means, I mean, if you were, I mean, this is quite a logical thing, right? So if you had two containers, right? In fact, let's even take one container. And I fill this container, let's say, with, uh, you know, a certain number of gas, right? Okay, a certain number of particles of a gas. All right, let's just say we've got 20 particles. Okay, so, right, I won't necessarily draw 20 of them there. Right, so what will happen? those 20 particles will fill a particular volume of the container, right? Now, what happens if I put in some more particles? Let's say I put in 20 more, but what will happen this time around, right? So, uh, if I put in more particles, then guess what will happen, right? They will actually occupy an even greater volume, okay? Look at the volume now now that I introduce more particles. So what does that mean? It means that the volume that a gas occupies, right, depends on the number of moles. So as a result, if we now convert this to an equal sign, we say, well, the volume is directly proportional to the number of moles. And so if we want an equal sign, we're going to say volume is equal to a constant multiplied by the number of moles. Now, what this does is that uh, we can simply say that if we divide by n on both sides, right, so the volume divided by the number of moles is equal to a constant. What does this mean? If I increase the number of moles, I increase the volume. If I increase the uh, if I decrease the number of moles, therefore I decrease the volume, right? Now, of course, what we can therefore do is say, well, it means that at volume 1, n number of moles 1, that will give me that constant k. But equally so, if I change the number of moles, then the volume will change, right? So again, it will, it will give me the same constant k. And so as a result, we say that V1 over N1 will be equal to V2 over N2, okay? Right, and by the way, um, we spoke uh, a little bit earlier on about Avogadro's number, and I said I was going to tell you about that. So Avogadro actually said that the number of particles, right, for any one mole of gas is actually equal to 6.023 times 10 to the exponent 23, right? This is particles per moles. Now, particles could be anything, okay? It could be, uh, um, you know, atoms. It could be electrons or whatever the case may be. But uh, this holds that if I wanted to get the number of moles, in this case, this would be uh, the, the constant that gives me the number of particles per mole of gas. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take some examples. So remember V1 over N1 will be equal to V2 over N2. 
uh, where n uh, in this case is the number of moles okay so this is the number of moles now remember that also to get the number of moles we uh, if we are given the mass right we always say number of moles will be equal to mass divided by the molar mass and of course this we get from the periodic table right so what we're going to do let's just get into some examples that we will look at and then uh, they will determine the way forward okay all right so let's look at the first exercise so we've got six cubic decimeters uh, of a gas right which is known to contain 0 0.975 mol, uh, moles of particles right they say determine the volume that will be occupied by the gas if it is increased to 1.9 moles right so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, apply avogadro's uh, law all right so we're going to say v1 over n1 is equal to v2 over n2 right so we know the first volume in this case was given as six cubic decimeters so i'm gonna leave my volume as six uh, i mean in cubic decimeters and this was when it had a a number of moles of 0 0.975 okay and now we want to find out what the volume will be if it now occupies 1.9 uh, moles right and we can cross multiply so 0 0.975 multiplied by 2 so that will be 0 0.975 v2 and 6 times 1.9 okay so we'll say 6 times 1.9 actually 6 times 1.9 that gives us 11.4 right and of course we can divide both sides by 0 0.975 okay so let's divide by 0 0.975 and that would give us 11.69 Okay, cubic decimeters, right? Now you can see we increased the number of moles of the gas, right? And what happened? Automatically, our volume increased from 6 cubic decimeters to 11.69. And so that is how the cookie crumbles. All right, let's take another one. And uh, I think we will then be in a position to conclude. All right, so looking at exercise two, so they say to us, uh, calculate the original number of moles of gas at 24 cubic decimeters. If the volume of the gas uh, changed to 8.4 cubic decimeters with four moles. Okay, so we want to know what would be the original number of moles. So we've got volume one, which is 24 but we don't know what the number of moles are and we've got uh, volume 2 which is 8.4 cubic decimeters and the number of moles in that case is given as 4 moles right so we're going to apply our formula v1 over n1 okay so let me write that nicely is equal to v2 over n2 so volume 1 in this case we said it's 24 over n1 and v2 that's 8.4 over n2 which is 4 and of course once again again we can cross multiply so we'll have 8.4 times n1 8.4 n1 is equal to 24 multiplied by 4 and so if we divide both sides sorry by 8.4 what we do on the left we do on the right so n1 
So the original number of moles will be 24 times 4, which divides by 8.4. And we get the number of moles to be 11.43. Okay, when I round it off. Okay, and once again, I want you to recognize that pattern. That once we, uh, uh, when we had a higher volume, right, in this case, it would mean that the number of moles were much higher. And remember, when we changed that volume and stepped it down a little bit, so we realized that the number of moles also decreased. All right, so I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. Look, I want to leave it here. And then um, what we're going to be doing next is that we are going to be looking at, um, you know, uh, just the combination of all these laws put together. Okay, and we're going to be talking about uh, how do we relate, uh, you know, using the formula PV is equal to NRT. That's what we're going to be uh, looking at, right? We call this the ideal gas equation, all right? So uh, if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure that you uh, hit that subscribe button, okay? And do follow your uncle on all the socials, and I'll see you guys again next time. Shop shop.